In this Madden 16 video, you're going to be learning how to beat zone defenses in Madden NFL 16. Guys, my name is Cody Ballard, and I'm here bringing you today with another Madden 16 tip. What I want to do today is I want to talk to you about the five sets for success. In the previous two videos, we've talked about the base play, kind of how to come out and get a flow offensively and kind of learn some of the concepts and things we were going to be doing as far as reading the defense goes. The second, uh, yesterday, we talked about how to beat man-to-man -man defenses, uh, specifically two-man under, probably the more difficult of the two to beat. And then today, we're going to be talking about how to beat zone defenses consistently from any playbook. The playbook we are using for this series is we're using the New Orleans Saints offensive playbook, um, but we will be showing you throughout the course of the season, we're going to be using a new playbook every week, showing you how to use those and uh, have success. Okay, so we're going to hop into this, guys. What I want to show you is how to beat any zone. The main zone we're going to focus on beating today is the cover three, um, but this will apply to every zone in the game because it's reads, it's progressions, and things like that. It's zone overload. What we're talking about is how to overload zones with your route concepts, your route combinations. So first and foremost, last video we talked about how we like to use the, uh, or excuse me, in the first video we talked about the tray open saint, how we like to use it as a nice uh, formation to come out in and get a basic read on what the defense is going to be doing. The second thing that we talked about was how to use the shotgun tight offset weak and, and also showing you how to use that formation uh, specifically to beat man-to-man -man coverage by using picks, mesh routes, and quick slants uh, to beat man. Today we're going to be two... Uh, looking for uh, a, a, f a formation to beat the zone defense. And what I like to do and when I, we talk beating zone defenses, we want to talk about uh, trips and bunch formations. You know, this is that uh, three wide receivers to one side of the field, and what we're going to really attempt to do is overload uh, one of the one of the outside sections of the field. Um, the key to passing, in my opinion, especially when we're talking about, um, especially when we're talking about uh, beating zone defenses, you know, we're going to mainly be looking at corner routes and uh, flat routes and those things. We're going to throw to the outside. And the reason we want to throw to the outside is because most user control players are going to be using the middle of the field. Okay, wing trio week is what we like to use uh, from the Saints book. Uh, and actually, well, let me take a look at the single back here. And I haven't looked at it much. Just see. Oh, they do have the bunch base, but we, and we know all about that. That's my favorite, one of my favorite plays plays is from there, um, but they don't have a single back bunch where we can get to from a, our, our uh, main personnel grouping. So wing trio weak. And the play that we're going to be looking at today is called corner strike. And what I like about the corner strike is this is this uh, a couple for, couple things off the bat. First and foremost, the formation's a trips formation, and that's really the key to anything. You can beat it with any any play. Um, and actually, you know, we may you end up using the Z spot. I may use the Z spot instead of that other one. Let's do. Let's let's use the Z spot, um, and it, and just for a small reason, um, we could do the corner strike, and I could show you some cool things with it. But for the be, you know, this is kind of a, a conceptual video, and I really just want to show the the concept of beating zone and what we really like to do with it. So anyway, we're going to use the Z spot today. Now, one thing we note off the bat is, first and foremost, this is a typical zone beating play. Uh, and that's important to note because it's going to teach us how uh, to beat zone defenses. What we want to do, first and foremost, we're going to look at the defense first and just show you that this defense has a zone. Everyone has a zone. They're going to a specific aspect of the field. Watch when I flip to man. You see that they all have man assignments. There's only two zones on the field, uh, but everybody else is going to follow wherever those receivers go. In zone, they're going to go to a disti distinct portion of the field and guard that area. And so if we, if we, if we space it out enough, we're going to be able to hit all these areas, uh, and there's one opponent we're going to try to overload, send three people at a distinctive point of, a f of the field uh, to do that. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well... First and foremost, we note that we can motion Jason Witten out just a hair. Uh, and this is going to be an, an interesting motion, uh, in my opinion, because if we we want to check in man-to-man -man coverage, but let's just note, he's now a receiver. And so what we see here is that he can actually get pressed, which is an interesting thing to note, uh, just for some of the blitz beating things and things like that. The next thing I want to show, and this isn't anything to do with the play, is we can motion Ruben Randall to the right side of the formation. Now this is important because it's going to give us an extra receiver on that side of the field. And so what you're going to see now is we have four receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. This is a very distinct overload to that right side. What you're going to also, also note is that they only have three guys to guard the right side of the field. 
They distinguish three guys to the right, three guys to the left, and one guy in the middle of the field. Most zones will do it this way. They'll guard different sections, but it will typically be three on one side, three on the left. So three guys now have to guard one on the left side, and three guys have to guard four on the right side. This is going to give us a little more of an advantage. Now the idea here, uh, and what we really were looking for, is we want to have one route that's going to stretch and spread that defense deep or, uh, vertically to kind of pull those deep zones away. And so what we like to do is we like to put Joseph Randall on a little streak pass. And what you're going to see here in cover four is we're going to be able to hit this little spot route underneath. Okay, that's first. Now one other thing you can do, and this is if you're going pure zone beater, you take Jason Witten and you streak him. What this is going to do is it's going to give you even more of a spread. And then you're going to take Randall, put him on a swing pass. So you're still going to have your flat pass, but it's now a little swing out to the back. And so you'll see here, you're actually going to have a little harder time really using it as a distinct route. Um, there's the, there it is to the running back. I want to show you to the tight ends a little bit better. You're going to get a little more uh, yardage from it. The other thing is that the um, tight end is not going to be unbumpable. I mean, he's going to be unbumpable, but the streak's not going to do anything against man. And we're not trying to beat man, but again, it always is able to be able to kill two birds with one stone. But first and foremost, we're going to say to streak Jason Witten. And then we're going to take Joseph Randall, and we're going to place him on a swing pattern to the right side of the field. We like to motion him over before we snap the ball, and we're going to set and hold. Now, what we're going to do here is the first read is always the... Uh, is we're not going to read defenders, we're going to read sides and sections of the field. And so the first thing that we want to note is we want to try to see if this flat is going to be covered. Here, Jeremy Lane is in a flat zone, and so he's kind of be the guy that we read. You see that he's going to come down to the flat, so we're not going to, if we were to throw that to Randall, you see it's not going to be as big of an option. What we also note, though, is that our corner, um, our corner route to Cole Beasley, uh, this route, you saw Jeremy Lane kind of fl flow with it. And this is actually the main route we want to hit. Here you see we try to throw it and Jeremy Lane covers it. Even though he's in a flat zone, what he's doing is he's playing a curl to flat principle. And what this teaches is that we want to take the flat away, but only if there's not a curl flat route that is open. With the curl flat route, he's going to play curl flat to the flats. And so what we're going to be able to do here is wait a little bit and then hit Jeremy, or Joseph Randall in the flats and get a couple yards. Now as you see, it's not perfect, um, it's not even really desired because of the fact that Jeremy Lane makes a tackle for three yards, nobody wants to gain three yards. We want to do a little better than that. So introduce the vertical stretch. We're taking Witten and we're going to place him on that streak and what it's going to do is it's going to clear out this middle section of the field and we're going to be a nice little spot route for Bryant to sit down in and gain a couple yards. And that's really what we're doing uh, with this. And, and what I've noticed, you know, in the la in, in you know the the last couple of times as we look through and, and really look with this, another thing is also a, a curl route to Witten is nice, um, but you see they're really close together, and so I could potentially use her both routes. So it's a simple read, and and most of the time you will be hitting Des Bryant. Most of the time you will. Let's look at a cover two. A cover two is going to have instant flat protection and three yellows on the field. You see now, it's got instead of more coverage to the outside, it has less. You know, it has more coverage to the inside. So here you see this corner route is still covered because he's playing curl to flat principles. He's going to play that corner route first, then come down to the flat. And this also does a couple of things for us um, this year. Is it, it does kind of deter us a little bit from running flat patterns um, and curl flat routes simply because of that uh, you know, reality that, you know, if, is it really worth this throw? Is this, is this really a throw that you're going to want to make, uh, just a quick little flat pass? One thing also to, to experiment with and practice with is if Witten's on the flat, does the corner get open? As you see here, it doesn't really get open. It's still covered. Um, and then one other thing to note um, as well that I like to look at is if I were to take Jason Witten and move him out here, place him on a hitch pattern, um, is that going to hold you know, those underneath routes? And see, he's going to take the same spot as Bryant, and so nothing really to look at there, but just some notes that you want to make as you work with your plays, some things to look for. But anyway, let me show you the cover too. And like I said, a lot of times you're going to be hitting this little spot route. I'm telling you, uh, it's really good. Here you see the spot route get covered. And, and what I want to show 
and I just want to show this in this replay. Because they have more coverage to the middle of the field, your spot route is actually going to get covered in this in this set. So see here, the spot route's covered, and then this corner route is also covered. So now we could check down to the flat. The other thing we could do is hit this slant pattern coming across, because what's going to happen here is this horizontal or this vertical stretch from Witten is going to pull that middle linebacker back, and we're going to be able to hit Williams coming across. So like I said, you know, it's a high-low read. Um, it's not always one that I like, but, um, you know, it is effective. And we'll show you this real quick. Let me show you the zone again. Cover two. The slant's going to come across, and we just kind of put it right in that pocket, and uh, we can make a nice little catch in possession, possession catch. One other thing um, with this that you could potentially do is streak Bryant, bring Witten over here, place him on that hitch pattern, and then Randall on the swing pass. What you'll see with this is you're going to have a little more of an opening uh, with the swing pass. And, um, you know, but like I said, the idea is that corner wrap to kind of pull that flat out and the spot wrap to kind of come underneath it. That's really the key at what we're doing here. Here we'll show you cover three. What you'll see with cover three is often you'll have that seam pass wide open. You see, because those middle guys are going to have to kind of sit uh, against that to play the spot route. And so it's going to give you more options with the streak. So you see, it's basically just a read what area of the field is not covered. Here you'll see cover three. Um, also, you, you know, you can kind of cut off this, this corner route. Um, but again, I don't really like to make user catches. Uh, I like to throw to open guys if possible because it's more consistent. And here you'll see this little flat pass is actually a little better against the cover three. Um, and don't underestimate the power of just taking the flat routes. But the main read, again, once again that you'll see, is this pull that it does to be able to hit this nice underneath pattern to Dez uh, for a quick five, six yards. So that's how we like to beat zone. Uh, one other thing that you can do is drag Des Bryant. What I really like this is, is something very simple. is a drag streak combo. And it's something that's been around for years. And I really like it. It's simple. Um, the cool part about something like this, um, if we were to do a drag route, is that we could streak wit and do the drag, bring Randall across and place him on an option pattern. And his route will do a good job at beating man-to-man. Uh, -man. And you see how it really works nicely. Uh, oh, and then one other option. And these are just some options you can do. This is popular zone beating tactics. But uh, one other thing is streak Randall bring Bryant on a drag route and then uh, you leave Witten on that flat so you still have that curl flat read and it changes up a little bit um, but what will normally happen is you may be able to slip it into Randall so those are just some options of things you can do to beat zone defense I personally uh, feel like the corner routes are not as good as they used to be uh, as far as a primary target route but what they do a good job of is they do a good job of opening up different areas and avenues for you to be successful in the middle of the field. Uh, and what I mean more by the middle, the right hash, kind of that outside but still in the middle of the field kind of type of look. So that's what we've got for you for the zone beater. Uh, one quick thing to note, uh, some review here. Trips formations. Essential to beat zone. I really like trips formations. Secondly have um, a quick read for his own blitz and that's why I like to have a flat pattern because what's going to happen let me show you and this is why I always like to have a flat um, if they're setting up a blitz here we'll just set up just a generic something they may see here but if they're setting up a blitz they may bring Chancellor out here he's your flat guy and they may blitz him hot you know they may say okay you know, we're, we're going to bring pressure and we're going to send pressure off that right edge because you've not been thrown to the flats much you haven't been taking advantage of it what you're going to see now is this route to Beasley, pass laid down, or wow, Wagner made maybe the greatest play I've ever seen right there. Because he was on a hook zone, he got out there. Um, let's show you this again, sorry for the confusion here, and just for video sh sake. But what you'll see, if we do it right, you'll see Beasley's route should be wide open and of course it is a read here Wagner goes with him and so we'll take this quick flat pass uh, and you know make some quick yards like that so so anyway but that is zone beater 
for the five sets for success. The whole philosophy is we have a play to beat zone defense, a play to beat man defense, and then we also have had a base play to come out in and get a flow. Tomorrow we'll be talking about another thing that you need to use for your passing game uh, in your offensive uh, scheme and philosophy. It's going to be video four.